Let us pray. What is the world to me with all its vaunted pleasure when you and you alone, Lord Jesus, are my treasure? You only, dearest Lord, my soul's delight shall be. You are my peace, my rest. What is the world to me? Amen. And the words that we consider this day, dearly beloved, are taken from Luke's Gospel account, noting these words of the Lord Jesus, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that killed the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. So far, the word of the Lord. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm looking out onto a sea of a lot of green out there. However, we've not switched the liturgical color from purple or violet to green. We are in Lent. And the words of Jesus become increasingly strident over against his unbelieving opponents. We'll come to that today, but first I'd like to ask a simple question. Do you love God? Do you love God? The hymn that we just sang, a powerful hymn of the Reformation era, begins with that unbelievably beautiful expression, Lord, thee I love with all my heart. David in the Old Testament loved the Lord God. Before he was king, and as a fugitive from wicked King Saul, David expressed his love of God in these magnificent words from Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved enemies. And he begins that psalm with those words, I love you, O Lord, my strength. David loved God as both the eternal divine being and Lord of heaven and earth and as his fortress, his mountain crag, his place of refuge. I hope God is that for you also and that you love him. In his small catechism, Dr. Martin Luther explains each of the Ten Commandments. He has that little phrase which we Lutherans kind of love, what does this mean? And in that first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, Luther explains we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We certainly know that God loves each of us. God made you. He created mankind in his likeness and image. And that image was lost through the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve, into sin. But a partial restoration of that image of God dwells in you through the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of the Son of God. But God made each of you as beautiful. He made you special to him. He also sanctifies you by his Holy Spirit. He keeps you steadfast in the one true faith in Christ our Lord. But he especially showed his redeeming love for each of us and all humankind when he offered up his son on the cross to redeem us, to buy us back from sin, from death, and from the power of Satan. The depth of God's love for you is immeasurable, wider than the equator, deeper than the Pacific Ocean, higher than Mount Everest. So great is God's love for you 
But his love is also intensely personal. God in Jesus Christ loves you. And that's why he would make that supreme sacrifice of surrendering his son to suffering and death on the cross in payment for our sins and transgressions. Now, in St. Luke's Gospel account, Jesus had explained about striving to enter through the narrow gate, to enter through that narrow gate of heaven. Humankind's majority is rejecting God and his grace in Christ and will someday weep and gnash their teeth in hell, having failed to enter through the narrow door of salvation through Christ alone. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks a powerful lament for the city of Jerusalem. First, though, some of the Pharisees warned Jesus to get away from Perea, where Jesus was right at that moment. Perea is the northeast territory of Israel, which was under the jurisdiction of that crafty fox, King Herod Antipas. It was King Herod Antipas who had John the Baptist beheaded. We don't know what the motive was behind this warning of these Pharisees. It may have been quite sincere, but later that wicked tyrant Herod would serve God's plan of salvation. For now though, Jesus as God's supreme and final prophet indicates that he would die at Jerusalem just as had numerous prophets before him like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Zechariah. But now was not the moment for Christ's sacrifice. Instead, our Lord speaks this powerful lament over Jerusalem in a beautiful, beautiful figure of speech. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you that now you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The imagery of a hen lovingly taking care of her chicks. That's what we have here. A mother's love, warmth, food, security. Jesus came as the one who loves, protects, and nurtures his children, that is, us. You are so precious to God no matter what badness has happened in your life, no matter how badly you've sinned and messed up, Christ loves you. He has earned God the Father's forgiveness of you, and he keeps you in the fold of his family, his church, his brood of faith, so to speak. The Jewish people represented by the citizens of Jerusalem, they were that brood which for the most part rejected God's love in his beloved son. How tragic. How utterly tragic. But equally as tragic is if you reject Christ's love and sacrifice in favor of glorifying the things of this world, whether good or evil, material things, fame and recognition, greatness in education, sports, business, or the arts. How sad is that? And yet, most people appear to be rejecting Christ. Sunday after Sunday, day after day, Wednesday after Wednesday in Lent, like a chicken that goes its own way rejecting the love and the protection and the kindness of its mother hen. That is why this morning I raise 
the simple question with you. Do you love God? I pray you do. But if you don't, then you might as well not waste your time here in worship of the Lord God this morning. If you don't love God, it will begin to show. Worship of the Lord becomes spotty and then non-existent. You won't confess Christ before others. Giving in response to God's love in Christ of the time, talent, and treasure that he has entrusted to you will disappear behind a shallow comment like, all the church wants is your money. Your prayer life will fall off. Why pray to a God who you reject? Oh, beloved, I humbly pray that is not what you believe or say or do. I earnestly pray that you love God and it shows. There are in this wonderful congregation many individuals who deeply love God. That love of God radiates from their hands and their faces and their hearts. Emulate them. The people of Jerusalem in their obstinacy sealed a disastrous fate for Jerusalem and for each of them as unbelievers. For they did not love God. They did not love his holy word. They did not love God's promises fulfilled in Messiah Jesus. But here is the good news. God, like a loving hen, seeks his own. Notice this. Jesus said that the hen gathers her chicks. The hen goes out of her way to gather those little chickens under her wings. And God gathers his believers, including right here in Metro Detroit and in your community and on your block. By his Holy Spirit, he gathers believers. He gathers us around his holy word and sacraments, which are God's means of grace, his instruments to bring to you and me forgiveness of sins, eternal life, salvation, his love, his peace, and so much more. God offers us his rich grace. His love is boundless. Receive his love then with a glad heart and then respond to the cross and grace of God in Christ who died and rose for you. Respond with your genuine love of God. Amen.